Welcome back everybody. In this video I will be showing a more advanced technique of shaping a pillowcake. I use a 10 inch Wilton pan and I've already got my layers baked and ready for cutting. Now I've got it on a piece of parchment paper here because I will flip it over and do the same on the other side to make sure it's nice and shaped. Okay, you'll you'll start by taking and shaving off the corner edges. Being sure to make make it neat and even. There are many ways of doing these. I think this one is probably the best for me. Okay, now that we've got the corners cut down some, now what we're going to do is get rid of this excess cake. Make sure your hands are nice and clean always. Then we're going to take some from around the sides and like a and curve it to the peak. best if you use a cold cake uh, for cutting. And then just turn it and do the other sides. I want to make sure it's nice and, and even all the way around. buttercream off the knife, it's easier to cut. Sure, you got those corners nice and sharp. Okay. Now just try to get as much of this crumbled cake up. Now we'll be flipping it. I've already got my cake board covered here in a nice shiny cake board cover. Just try to make sure you get it as even as you can to the board before you sit and flip. It's a little messy, but it's okay. <laughs> it's worth it. 
And that's done. I don't like a mess, so I'll get that real quick. Now you'll basically just do the same with this top piece just coming. Just take some off that that corner. Give it a slope. Okay guys, we're back for the second part of the pillow video. I will be better creaming. You'll want to take caution when we're doing the edges because you don't want to lose one of your pillow edges. Best to use a lot of buttercream so that you're not tearing your cake up. Tools nice and clean as you go. I do make my own buttercream, so you can find tutorials on on how to do icing buttercreams and uh, use which one works best for you. Make sure you get it nice and smooth so you don't have air bubbles when you place your fondant on it. Get those edges nice and tight. I just keep going around smoothing it and, and shaping it. it's the way you want it. Use right much so you don't pull your cake apart when you're smoothing it. Better to have too much than not enough. Oops. Just want to be real careful because that cake will try and crumble on you and stick to your buttercream. And 
you don't want that. I'm going to go back through and, and shape it. But for now, I just need to make sure that I get lots of buttercream. That's what they like. And as you see, it gives it more height to the pillow. You know, I couldn't do what I do today with these cakes if it weren't for videos that I could, you know, when I'm not baking, I'm learning. So, there's so much to learn out there now on the big world wide web. And, um, you know, I'm just paying back a little bit from all the videos that I've watched and learned from. It's unbelievable what you can do. And just try and get it as smooth as you can. Just try and keep those corners. That's the most important part of it looking like a pillow when it's finished. Make sure the buttercream is even, evenly distributed. A lot of people use all kinds of tools. I, I prefer to use this one. I feel like I have more control with it. Just clean my board a little bit. Go ahead and let this buttercream set up and prepare it for fondant. and tidy. Time for the fondant. I've already got the fondant rolled out on my Wilton fondant mat. It's a lot of fondant but it's spread out really thin. I chew thin because I'm going to have to quilt this so we don't want it to be too thin. Because you'll cut through it when you go to do the, the quilt. I'm controlling the phone this morning too, so I hope I, I've got you all in where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and it's okay to have a little bit of lump in it because it's a pillow and pillows are lumpy. You want to get those edges taken. Cup around those, those edges. When it keeps its, its form. Just 
in those corners. Make sure you get out any creases. Let's see. cover here. We're just going to trim around it because I'm actually going to tuck, excuse me, I to deliver a cake outside. Got a little cold. Okay, to keep your your excess fondant. You'll need it for something else. Make sure you wrap it. In your plastic. Keep it nice and air sealed. I'm gonna actually use a tool to help me get that fondant. Let's come in my my wooden tools, and you can use your fingers as well. you get it off with your fingers. You don't want to get it back on the, uh, the pillow. Okay. And you just want to go and smooth out those corners. Nice and smooth. I also use a paintbrush, clean paintbrush, to clean up around the board. And it helps shape. You can use it to help shape. You don't want a lot of that buttercream squeezing out of the bottom. And this is the best tool I've found to, to deal with that. see any areas that might, you know, get a little out of whack, it's okay, just find it is pretty easy to work with, pretty forgiving. Now for this quilt pattern, I'll be using Flavored, clean, of course, floss. Going to start by starting in the center 
and then I'm just going to put a little impression in it. There we go, just a, a little one because you're going to go back through anyway. And, uh, and make it a little bit better. Now you'll just try and get those marks as even as you can. With your ruler. I hope you guys can see this because I'm just making small impressions and I can go back through and uh, use my my nifty tools to make it even deeper. You'll do the same the other way. So now you'll turn the cake and then do it in the opposite. And then just use your ruler to do it again. Be careful not to puncture your You're fine then, because the buttercream might come through it. You want it to look nice and and neat. Now I can go through with this. I use the one that makes it look more like it's thready. Just try and follow your. And we're just going to come in in these corners of the diamonds and we're just going to put a little impression. Like that. So we'll put a, a bead in there. Just do that until you get all of them on the top done. A dog outside. She must hear something. My little alarm for when people come in. You can really do whatever you like with the, with that. You don't you don't have to put them on or leave them off or or what have you. But this just makes it look more realistic and detailed.
I watched a tutorial on one of these and she had actually used a ganache. Um, they look really nice too. I do use ganache sometimes, but uh, I wanted to do this one in buttercream because it's got so many layers. I'm not sure about the sides. I, I don't think that I'll do those. It might be a little too much because I'm also going to have a crown topper on here. Welcome in the baby boy. Now I'll be using small little gold beads. So just kind of push them in there. That way they're nice and set. These are hard little hard candies. I always tell them, you know, when they pick up that if anybody has problems with their teeth or or whatever that they might want to, you know, not have those. Whoops. <laughs> that one might be a little too small. Get it, just sit it in there, you know, where it'll stay. That way, when they cut into it, there won't be little candy balls going all over the place. Okay, guys, we're back to do the trim work around the pillow. I'm going to add just a little bit of water. I've made, I've created a line. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I've created a line there. I don't have a rope mold that I can get the rope impression from, so I just make my own. Just take a couple of pieces of, of fondant, and then what I'm going to do with this one, I use a metallic food, edible food gold, gold to put on. To put on it, we'll just put a little bit. In there, we'll go ahead and, and get this rope in there. The water will help adhese the, the rope to the cake. Just a little bit. I'm going to trim those those off because we're going to put tassels. We'll be putting tassels here in the corner, so I'll just kind of take that off and take that off. And then I'll just take a little bit of my liquid gold and just kind of brush it on there, get it, try not to touch the cake. 
a little bit goes a long ways when it comes to this gold. If you do happen to get a little bit on the cake, it's okay because you can go back through with a little bit of water on the paintbrush and it'll come right on. This is completely edible. I will invest in a, a rope mold, sure enough, because it will be well worth it. It's time consuming when you have to make so much rope. Okay, now I'm going to finish the rest of this uh, off camera because it's going to take so much time. And then I will return to finish it up. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, we're back and finishing up the pillow cake. Right now I'm just going to make sure the board is nice and clean. And then we're going to put a crown on the top. And there you have it. Beautiful pillow cake. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know I sure have. And until next time. Bye guys.